Node.js version 21.7 is out. Is this the end of .env? Let's check it out. So the first interesting feature here is the ability to load environment variables from files. We used to use .env for this, so let's check it out. So let's say I have a .env file here, and I have a host variable here. I can easily load this environment file into my project by typing in process.loadenv file and then the path to the file. So it's going to be .env here. And let's console log process.env.host. And there you go, it just works. And you can also load multiple files. So let's say I have a base.env file and also a .env.development file for a development environment that has a host set to something.io. Then I can duplicate this statement and change this to .env.development. Just make sure that the file you want to take priority is at the top. And then Node.js is going to load both of them. So if I had additional values in my base file here, like port, uh, I could still get that value, even though it's not defined here in .env.development. So there you go. It just works. I think this is really great. It's a much needed feature to have in Node.js. I do have to say, I'm not a huge fan of this. I would prefer that there would be an option to say, for example, load end file and then provide an array of paths and load them all. Um, this way I don't have to duplicate this because it's pretty common that you have multiple that you need to load from. Um, so I hope we get that too. Do you think this is going to be the end of .env? Let me know in the comments. I'm curious to hear what you think. Another great addition in Node.js is the ability to easily generate hashes. So I'm going to import crypto here. And now we have a built-in function, crypto.hash. And on the first argument, I'm going to provide the type of the hash. So let's say SHA-256 and value to hash on the second argument. And then let's console log that. And there you go. Just one line of code, one statement, very easy. It supports SHA-1 as well. It supports MD5 as well. And I'm sure it supports a few others. So this is great. Previously, you had to use some chaining and you had to then convert it into a string and stuff like that. This is much, much easier and much needed. And by the way, there is one thing developers don't know. For about two or three years now, you don't need to install UUID packages from NPM anymore. Crypto is capable of generating UUIDs. And the way you do this is by typing in crypto.randomUUID. That's it. Call that function and you have a UUID. Pretty nice. All right, the last addition that we're going to talk about in this video, the ability to style your text in command line interfaces. So Node has introduced this style text method in the utility library. So uh, style text require util. And now I'm able to say text equals style text and I can give it a style. So for example, make it red and say error and then console log that and it is red. And I can also make it uh, italic or bold or underline and maybe a few other things. Um, but basically, yeah, pretty simple. You can obviously mix and match them. So you could say style text and then style text again and say bold, error. And you get them both bold and red. So that's fine. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of the interface. I think it's a little bit cumbersome. And I also don't think this is going to be how people uh, style their CLIs yet. I do still believe that libraries such as Commander.js and Oakleaf are going to dominate CLI development. Um, obviously, CLIs are not just about colors. That's it, folks. If you want to see the full change log for this release, you can find it in the description down below. If you like the video, then please like it and consider subscribing to the channel. See you next time.